What's popping people, it's your boy the beast of Ecom finally back with another video dropping nothing but you already know value bombs. So in today's video I'm going to show you guys exactly how we did $35,000 in 24 hours this month. So not results that happened in 2018 or any results that happened you know earlier in this year. We're talking about right now this month November 2019 and also what we're going to do is we're going to actually break down the whole of the profit to see how much we actually took home as well. But before we jump into all of that really quickly I am back on YouTube and posting i do apologize i haven't posted a video in probably about a month's time the reason for that being if you don't follow me on the socials which you probably should do but i developed an eye infection which had me looking like i had rounds with tyson so unfortunately i didn't want to scare away my uh, my followers or anything like that so i had to lay low and of course it has been q4 so i've been extremely busy sporting a little bit of a q4 beard here but i am back and i will be posting on youtube much more regularly also while i was away we did hit 40 thousand subscribers on my youtube channel so thank you guys very much if you are new then hello so what i will be doing is i will be doing a giveaway on this video as a welcome back and for hitting 40,000 subscribers so make sure you stay to the end what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be giving away a one-on-one -on -one consulting call with me okay we can jump on a call and go over absolutely anything you want so if you want to win that consulting call then make sure you watch to the end of this video to understand exactly how to win and of course make sure you like this video and drop a comment down below if you get some value from it so let's quit the talking let's jump straight into the video so you guys can learn some value bombs to take your store to the next level so let's jump straight into this video i'm going to cover a lot of different things in this video um you know all sorts of different things that are going to help you take your store to the next level okay so i highly recommend that you watch all of this video to the end and we're actually at the end what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you obviously inside of the ad accounts how much we actually spent for this day and of course how much profit we actually made as well for this day on this uh thirty five thousand dollars in the 24 hours okay so let's jump straight into things now First and foremost, of course, is um, this is not another fluffy how-to generic video. I see loads of those kind of videos on YouTube. I'm going to cover some very specific and major key things in this video. Okay, certain things that have pretty much, you know, helped me shift things and helped me obviously achieve these numbers. Okay, and uh, these things as well will help you shift your store and take it to the next level. And like I said, these are not numbers which are, you know, 2018. This isn't even early 2019. This is November 2019. Okay, so these are current numbers, right? Um, high level numbers, you know, they're, they're, they're decent, so to speak. So just to give you guys some, some motivation as well. These are some of the things that I will cover. Okay, again, no BS zone. We don't do no BS around here. So first and foremost, what I'm going to talk about is setting up correctly for 30k plus days, uh, scaling to 30k days using super CBOs and different CBOs and how you should set those up uh, and how you can get 8 to 23x ROAS on your retargeting. Uh, retargeting is something that I've, I've heavily focused on as well um, to help you get, uh, when you are spending money on Facebook, you want to make sure that you are retargeting, okay? So in the later stages of the video, I'm going to be breaking down some little tactics and things that you can use to really improve your ROAS, so make sure you stay to the end on that as well. And of course, at the end, we're going to be breaking down all of the numbers uh, the profit made for this um, actual day and then finally of course uh, there's a welcome back free consulting call giveaway so if you do want to hop on the phone with me uh, and win that giveaway then of course make sure you stay to the end so uh, a lot to cover make sure you do of course drop a like on this video if you do get some value from it likes do help the channel likes do help the video uh, you know and it encourages me to put out more content like this so if you do enjoy this video which no doubt you probably will pretty much guaranteed then obviously please do appreciate dropping a like on this video so let's jump straight into things okay we've got a lot to cover go and get yourself a drink and get comfortable so first and foremost what you need to do is you need to set up the machine first and this is very important you can't have a machine if you don't set things up correctly so how can you go about setting up the machine uh, in the correct way so that it's running right from the off to make money right so 
I'm gonna break it down into store setup essentials and uh, Facebook ads as setup essentials, okay? Um, so first things first, and again, these are very specific things in this video, okay? Very key things that I've cut out all of the fluff and all of the basic stuff. So we're just gonna get into the pretty much the nitty gritty, right? So always first and foremost, set up a post sale upsell to increase your AOV. If you don't know what AOV is, it stands for average order value, okay? The higher your average order value, the more you can spend on Facebook to acquire a customer. So it's always important to increase your average always value as much as you possibly can okay I personally use an app called sweet upsell um, now there are others out there uh, zipify one click upsell you know uh, cart hook those sorts of things into cart another one that you can use to um, you know upsell but I personally just use sweet upsell on stores it's cheap it does what it just because it's cheap doesn't mean it doesn't work but it's a great app it's very basic for for people who just want to you know get a good get a good upsell on their on their uh, on their store so I use sweet upsell it's very cheap it's only $19 19 90, yeah not $20 a month okay 99% um, of the time with this post sale upsell I just pretty much upsell the exact same product at a discounted price. So if someone buys one product, um, I disc I then show once they completed the sale, I then show them the exact same product, but at a discounted price. So if you buy um, a pair of headphones, for example, we'll say, okay, um, you know, buy the exact same headphones for a friend or, you know, just in case you lose one pair for 30 to 40% off. And that converts very well. We generally get anything from about uh, five all the way up to 16% on our upsells. So it depends on obviously the offer and the price of the actual product that you're selling. So I always recommend post upsells. And again, personally, sweet upsell is just one the, uh, app that I like to use. Okay. And I think I'll leave a link down below for sweet upsell. Actually, um, it will be an affiliate link, but, um, Hey, uh, also what you want to do is I'm personally using current, uh, Shopify's native currency multi checkout. They did roll this out and I have got a video about, you know, setting that all up and those kinds of things. Um, I'll leave a link in one of the corners to, to, to go over that. Uh, now this allows for worldwide selling, of course, and you will see that my store is in this particular store is in pounds. Uh, and also what I will mention is a lot of people will say, what kind of store is it? Is it general? Is it niche? This is niche product. This is a niche store. Um, based off a general store, which we were getting a lot of uh, traction with. Um, and we we're just very much selling a lot of products in the exact same niche. So we just rebranded the whole store and, uh, and now it's a niche store, okay? Now, selling in the native multi-currency checkout, okay, uh, allows for multi allows for worldwide selling, like I've mentioned, but it has its pros and its cons. The pros is, of course, when you set this up, customers can check out in their own currency, which can, of course, increase your conversion rate, right? Um, but the cons of that is, of course, the price is a little bit more expensive for the customer because uh, Shopify factor in their currency conversion, right? So uh, you'll find that the, the, it's not a direct exchange. So basically, the customer in the States will pay a little bit more than the customer selling in the U in a, who's buying from the UK because um, Shopify add in that currency fee. Now, what you want to do, of course, is you can you can either use this, you know, or you can just get a, you know, a currency app, which just change things and they they check out in your store based currency, um, which, again, can work. We're just doing things this way. Um, you can either use the app um, Vitals, which does it automatically, okay? Or you can do it at, at you can see in the, this, this little corner here, I've got the tracking. Basically what you do is you can, I actually learned this from someone else, someone tagged this in me. It was, I was doing it a long way, they just said it, do, do it this way and it works. So you just put in currency equals uh, E-U-R, okay? But make sure obviously you're using your store uh, your store URL and what will happen is when the current when the person someone from United States not you know, when someone from um, Europe okay whichever countries you're targeting then goes through this advert the store will completely change and will be in um, euros and it means that they can check out in euros as well okay Final point here on a store checkup is I uh, we like to use Optin Monster exit intent pop-ups to capture leads before they leave the website. This is what I like to call the save a sale technique, okay? Because you will know what your bounce rate is. You can check Google Analytics and those sorts of things. And generally what we like to offer is anything from 5 to 10% off in exchange for their email. And it works fantastically, okay? And I'll show you really quickly what that looks like on um, what Optin Monster is and what it looks like on a, on a, on a store as well. 
Um, but basically you can use these leads and then they enter, you can set up Klaviyo um, for more upselling as well, you know, and, and pushing them to buy and use the discount code essentially. And this is very good because Black Friday is very soon as well. So the more emails that you've got, the more potential buyers that you have that you can send out emails to, to get that money, um, you know, without spending any additional revenue, uh, any additional money on advertising, right? Um, so just really quickly, just to show you Optin Monster, you can see here we've, uh, this is the Optin Monster, Optin Monster website. And if you just go to Optin Monster, you can find it. And uh, that little pop up that just happened there is basically what they do. Now to give you an example of this, you can see here, this is uh, a store that is using Optin Monster. And basically, you know, when you go to move away from the, when you go up to the top of the desktop page, or when you're on mobile, you can set it based on, um, you know, what your average exit, exit, what your average exit rate is, you know, and uh, this thing will pop up. You can offer them 10% if you put in any sort of email there. Click that, click this, uh, get discount. They'll probably either email it to you, or they may just flash it up there and then. And flashing it up there and then makes it really easy and seamless for the customer then to just go ahead and uh, add that at the checkout and get that discount, okay? So it's what I like to call the saver sale, where people were, uh, you know, are thinking twice about things, you just offer them 10% off, that potentially can convert them, okay? So that's the store setup, okay? Moving on, um, basically we wanna talk about the Facebook setup essentials. Now, uh, when it comes to the Facebook setup essentials, right, is obviously you wanna make sure that you've got multiple ad accounts, business managers. Uh, Facebook has had, obviously, you may or may not have had any sort of, um, you know, issues with disabled accounts, even if you're running white hat branded stuff, people are still getting, you know, disabled. I personally always scale with three ad accounts. I always like to scale across three ad accounts, any sort of product that, or any sort of store, we always like to scale across three ad accounts. Now, uh, two of those ad accounts are in one business manager and another ad account is in another business manager and they are our two advertising business managers. We have others that host pages and pixels and all those sorts of things, okay? Um, now, what you want to do, of course, is you want to make uh, sure that you've got ad account spending limits increased as well, because the last thing you want to have is to be scaling a product and to know that you're, you know, you're going to constantly hit your 5k cap uh, ad account. So I believe that when I reached out for on a new ad account, you can only do this when you're nearing the max for like three days straight. So if you are nearing that max, make sure you reach out to Facebook and get that increased. And of course, the final point is uh, make sure you have multiple backup payment sources as well, um, because some suspect that if you get some decline payments uh, or the payment fails, then it can affect your ad performance, right? So they are the face, they're the, they're the store setup and the Facebook setup to help you that you need to get in place, essentially, before moving on to, you know, scaling, before moving on to, um, you know, testing or anything like that, make sure you've got these things right. Um, so let's actually move on now and uh, get on with things. So you've set up the machine, now you need to scale the machine. How are you going to scale the machine? Well, this video isn't focused on testing, okay? I'm not gonna go into how to test products or anything like that. If you wanna learn all of that, I've got tons of videos on how you can do different testing methods. Uh, I'll leave a link in one of the corners probably for uh, you guys to check out those videos. Again, I'm not talking about um, testing in this video. This video is more about scaling and some more kind of advanced things and some of the things that aren't really talked about on YouTube, okay? So, uh, I want to talk about the CBO scale cycle really quickly, but this is essentially how it works. Um, first and foremost, you have like a testing campaign and the testing campaign is going to be looking for new audiences. So anything from like interest targeting, you know, any interest targeting that you've got, any lookalikes, stick them in there. Any sort of custom audiences that you want to test will go inside of this one testing campaign. Inside of the test campaign, like it says here in orange, you want to run your test from anything from two to three days. And then obviously then what you want to do is identify what your good ad sets are. What are your good ads? First and foremost, your creatives. Uh, and what are your good ad sets as well? Now, generally anything from, we'll talk about scaling a little bit later as well, but generally I now personally like to look for anything with seven plus profitable sales. Um, that's kind of a long time to wait to, to then decide to scale or not, right? And I'll talk about that in a little moment in time and why it's important. And then the final step is, of course, to move to a CBO to prepare to scale further, right? So 
again, scaling the machine. Patience is key. And like I've mentioned, this is one of the very biggest shifts in the mindsets that I've personally had. I'm a very impatient person. Uh, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm very impatient means I'm not patient, duh. But, uh, you know, what I've done is now I like to, the more that I can spend on an ad set spends, the higher the confidence level that you will have, that that, that creative and that audience works. So, you know, if the ad set has spent, you know, $100 or £100, you know, and all of the uh, purchases are profitable, you've got a very high confidence level that when you move that into a CBO, uh, it's going to have that same success. Whereas if you're just trying to wait for three to four purchases and it's only had spent like, you know, $30 or, or $40, then your confidence confidence level isn't going to be as high. And one thing that was always happening to me and probably a lot of you guys out there as well is that um, when you was, you know, when you were doing things and waiting for three to four, you were putting into CBOs trying to scale and it wasn't working. They were falling flat on their backside and it just wasn't able to scale. So my one key to you is just to wait that little bit longer to have a higher confidence level. OK, second point is you can create um, super CBOs and this is combining winning ad sets to make large audience sizes. Now, to give you an example of that, let's say, for example, you've got one to two percent of a product um, view content at, you know, let's say USA is always two point one million or thereabouts. And then you've got another ad set in the testing campaign, which is three to four percent, uh, and it's the product with ninety five percent views, and both of them are working great. Um, but you've got other interests which are, you know, got larger audience sizes. So what you, what I recommend that you do, of course, as well, is to make for have Facebook have larger audience sizes. Personally, working better for me for scaling. So what you could do is put them both in a ad set together, so that you've now got an audience size of four point two million here, like I've mentioned here. And, um, you know, if that works out, you're going to have a lot more leverage and a lot more room to scale to those bigger days, right? Rather than having a little bit of a burnout uh, at 2.1 million, right? Now, the third point here we've got here is consider your blended ROAS across your campaigns. And this is something that a lot of people, a lot of uh, new marketers don't do. And um, what you want to do is obviously look at your blended ROAS across your campaigns. So your main campaign and your retargeting campaigns. If you've got something that is working, you always want to make sure that your retargeting campaigns are working great, okay? So always make sure that you've got your retargeting campaigns working. Now, most important is you may be able to profit lower on your main campaigns knowing that your retargeting campaigns will heavily boost your overall ROAS. Now, this is very, very important, okay? So some people may look at their main campaign where they're spending like a lot of their money, but they may be only profiting, let's say, 15%. Um, but their retargeting is 5Xing or their retargeting is, you know, um, 3Xing or so, but they're constantly, they're so blindsided by that main campaign that they're cutting stuff and all those sorts of things are not taking into consideration the um you know the overall blended roa so that's one thing that i recommend that you do now the fourth point is to aim to keep cbo uh, ad set audience sizes around the same size and this is just a little tip for you guys um this generally helps it spend much more effectively in most cases than what i've personally found because sometimes what happens is if you've got an audience size which is like 10 million and the rest of all 2 million facebook pretty when you put them into a cbo what tends to happen what i used to experience anyway is that you know facebook would push a lot of the budget to that 10 million audience regardless of whether it was working or not and the rest just wouldn't get any of the budget so you know ever since i've made that change things have uh, have worked out very very well so talking about CBO scaling here is just a, uh, a you know a brief overview. Again, website conversion campaigns, anything from two hundred to five hundred dollars, depending on of course your metrics. Anything from like three to five ad sets is generally what I like to have inside there. You know, your top five obviously goes without saying. The ones with the sevens, the tens, the um, plus profitable purchases, and aim for obviously the same audience sizes. Now, a little tip there is, of course, if the audience size is extremely large, let's say it's 10 million and, you know, nothing can really make up with that. Just put it and give it its own separate CBO and just dupe it like three to five times is generally what's working the best. Two to three ads per ad set, okay, is generally working. Identify from whatever your test is. Now, if there's only got, you know, if you've got two different ones that are working great, put them both in, fantastic. If you've only got one which is a standout one, uh, then you can dupe that two to three times inside of the ad set, inside of the CBO, right? Generally, I like to go for all placements as well. 
and uh, I like to run for three days uh, minimum just so you know depending on obviously the budget just to let Facebook and the whole algorithm kick in and actually utilize the budget that we're spending now let's move on to actually retargeting because I've, I've talked about retargeting and uh, I want to talk about you know I've mentioned earlier in this video how you guys can get some insane ROAS on your entire retargeting so let's break those things down and some of the things that are uh, that are working right so um, if we squeeze in the machine, so now that we've actually, uh, we're scaling the machine, we want to squeeze the machine and make uh, as much as we possibly can out of Facebook, right? Now, one thing that has been working great is uh, DPA CBOs, and they've been working amazingly, pretty much like three to five X on a daily basis consistently. Um, if you don't know what DPA is, it's dynamic product ads. Uh, basically, Facebook will advertise a product um, automatically, you know, based on whatever the person has viewed on your website. Um, they've been working really, really well. And the best results personally have come from the one to three time frame campaigns. So, you know, I like to set up a DPA campaign CBO journey for one to three days. You know, uh, you can set up and I did set up a, a four to seven day campaign. Uh, the results were okay, but they weren't fantastic. But the one to three day, you know, pretty much works the best and pretty much always will, no matter what kind of store that you are running, right? Um, <clears throat> The second point is um, offer discounts based on where they are in a funnel. It kind of goes without saying. Typically, the closer that they are to the purchase, the more discount that you offer. So, for example, um, you know, if someone's added to cart and didn't purchase, then you can offer them 10% off. If they uh, viewed the content and didn't add to cart, then you could offer just say 5% off or free shipping. However, Having said that, I've had very good success with um, just saying low stock and just having that as a reminder for people who add to cart and didn't purchase just to tick them over that line, but you still get the complete order amount, right? Now, the final point on this is manual traffic retargeting campaigns are killer, okay? And pretty much 95% of the time, they work for me, okay? I like to use traffic campaigns, um, for uh, the only reason why I use traffic campaigns is for the add to cart people who didn't who people who add to cart and didn't purchase right I'd set up a traffic campaign retargeting campaign for them for whatever specific product that I'm selling um, personally the other stages and I have tested the other stages but um, you know like view content didn't add to cart with a traffic campaign but they didn't work they rarely work that well you know website conversion campaigns work the best for those stages but when it comes to add to cart didn't purchase Traffic campaigns is what I always go with 100% uh, of the time, okay? So, now that we're at the end of the video, let's actually look at those numbers and see how much we actually took home on this uh, 35K day, okay? And let's actually have a look inside of the ad account. So, on this one ad account on the, uh, the 6th of November, we spent uh, £5,000. Uh, the ROAS was 1.78. And we bought in one point. Uh, we bought in nine k. Now remember, Facebook's um, uh, attribution is always off a little bit, so these numbers are always, you know, the, the what we make inside of Shopify is always higher. And I'll talk about the break even ROAS on some of these products uh, and break down the whole numbers uh, on a spreadsheet shortly. Okay, so you can see exactly how much we made. So that's one ad account, and like I said, we spread we go across three ad accounts. This one here, we spent three k, uh, brought in seven k, and a ROAS at two uh, three three. And the final ad account, we spent 4K, close to 5K, uh, at a 1.82 uh, ROAS and brought in 8K. And remember, these numbers are always the, the what you make is always off. What you spend is always correct because, you know, Facebook will never mess that up, right? Um, but whatever you make uh, is always pretty much off. So let's break down the actual numbers, okay? And um, what I'm going to do, actually, first and foremost, is show you this uh, sheet here. Is What I like to do is now... People of my course actually get access to a sheet uh, pretty much just like this. And uh, this helps me break down all of my break-even ROAS and all those sorts of things. So if I'm getting a product for $4 um, and selling it for, you know, $25, then, you know, I know that my break-even ROAS is 1.25 here. And obviously I know what ROAS I need to be at to make all of these numbers here. So if I'm selling a product at this, I only need 1.78 to be 30% profiting, okay? Um, if I'm at 1.56, okay, then I'm uh, at 20% profit. But again, this is obviously selling a product with a really, really super low uh, break-even ROAS, okay? Um, if we're selling a product at, let's say, 6, uh, then again, 
you know, it all changes and it all does a thing. And then over this side here, we've got um, the, what I like to do is I like to know, because what I, oops, what I generally do is I forget what custom audiences and what look like audiences I've used and I've tested and I've created. So I always mark this down on here. And then I obviously like to use my 30 days as well if the product progresses that far. So um, this is a very good sheet. Again, um, course members of Ecombees 2.0 get that sheet uh, and they can use it to help them scale, okay? So the overall store true ROAS was uh, 2.10 overall, okay, on a surface level. You can see there, that is what we spent across the ad accounts, okay? Now, let's have a look at the actual breakdown. So the actual breakdown, we uh, brought in 28,000 pounds. We spent um, 12,000 pounds on adverts, okay? Cost of goods, which is the cost of the actual goods, was close to £7,000. So overall, we spent £19,790, which brings our profit margin, um, which brings our profit, total profit into uh, £7,249, which converted at the time of recording this video is $9,389. Okay, so a very decent day. And that brings a profit margin of 26 0.81% uh, to be specific. Now, some people may say, oh, the, uh, the processing fees aren't in there. Uh, to be honest, the processing fees probably only would have been about $800 uh, to £500, if that, okay? Um, so yeah, you know, worst case scenario, let's just call it, um, you know, 25%. So very much still a fantastic day. Uh, fantastic numbers, of course, you know, it works. You know, the, if you follow a good strategy, uh, you know, you can still make money online, right? Um, so back to this and the consulting call. Okay, so those who want to jump on or have the chance to have a one-on-one -on -one consulting call with myself as a welcome back and as a, uh, you know, hitting 40,000 subscribers, thank you very much. First and foremost, to enter, what you've got to do is you've got to like this video. It doesn't cost you anything. All you've got to do is like this video. Second thing you have to do, okay, is you have to click the link in my pinned comment. I'll leave a pinned comment down below. Uh, make sure it's the first one. Um, click that link and what it will do is it will pop up and what you have to do is you have to sign in to Facebook Messenger and message me the word free call. That's all you got to do to enter it. You've got to enter, uh, enter the word free call. And then what you've got to do is come back to this video, okay, and comment the word on this video, done. And then that way you, uh, you, you, know, you let me know that you've entered the giveaway, okay? So a recap of that really quickly. Like this video, click the link in the pinned comment and message me the word free call. Come back to this video and then uh, message the word down below, uh, done, okay? Put in, so, just, so on this video, I wanna see loads of comments just saying dun, 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 dun. And uh, hopefully you guys message me a lot saying free call. That is all you've gotta do to get, uh, to win the chance. And what I'll be doing is I'll be, um, I'll be announcing the winner next week, but the only gonna the only way you're gonna get an answer is by if you uh, message me. That's the only way I'm gonna get back to you via Facebook DM. So if you don't, then, you know, you're not gonna win. So good luck to everyone, um, you know, and hopefully I'll be speaking to one of you guys very soon. If you did get some value from this video, make sure you like this video. It doesn't cost you a thing and you've just got some free value. So the least thing you can do for me is drop a like on this video for me. And of course, if you aren't a subscriber and like this video, then make sure, of course, you subscribe to the channel and also make sure you turn the notification bell on as well so that you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Black Friday is very soon and a lot of people are asking me, am I going to do a discount on Ecombees 2.0, my course for Black Friday? The answer to that is you're just going to have to wait and see and find out, okay? Um, but if you do want to join in the meantime, then click the link down below. If you want to wait till Black Friday, then feel free to do so as well. Remember, if you do want to win a one-on-one -on -one consulting call with myself, then you already know what you got to do, but just a quick recap. All you got to do is like this video, okay? And then click the link down below in my pinned comment, which should be at the top of this video. Message me the word free call, okay? Free call, and then come back to this video and type done okay that way it's done and then i'll be announcing the winner in a week's time so make sure you do that asap but that is it for this video it's good to be back i'm glad to be back to be able to put out videos to help you guys take things to the next level that is all take care and i'll see you later